All right, everybody, welcome into the Auburn Live Basketball Show. I am Justin Hokinson, joined, as always, by contributor Jay Phillips. And talk a little Auburn basketball. Hey, real quick, two things. Go subscribe to AuburnLive.com, $29.99 until the start of next football season. That's a killer deal. Go take advantage of that. And go to the Auburn Live YouTube page, subscribe. Um, hit the notifications so that when a new video goes, po goes, goes up or we go live, you get a notification. So go subscribe to uh, the Auburn Live YouTube channel. All right, Jay, let's talk about talk about a little Auburn basketball. Tough two-game stretch, losses to AM and West Virginia. They come back and beat Georgia like a drum on Wednesday night. Looked really good. Second time around, a completely different game than what we saw in Athens. I mean, just really, really night and day across the board. Um, beat, beat Georgia by 21. They were up by as many as 28 in that game. Um, and that's on the heels, of course, of the of the uh, the tough the tough couple of losses, including a comeback bid that fell short in Morgantown. Um, what are your thoughts on this Auburn team now after this three game stretch, couple of losses, come back with a win, and now we all know what's coming at Tennessee, at Texas A and M, and Alabama is your next three, and then of course you know you still got Missouri in there who can score. You got at Kentucky, and then you got Tennessee again and Alabama again. Um, later in the season but this this next three game stretch is literally against the number one team in the conference and then the two teams that are tied for second with you at Auburn so pretty pretty brutal three game stretch we know what's coming up what do you make of the last three games for Auburn basketball yeah you know good and bad in all three of those games to an extent I think if it hadn't been for that second half in Morgantown it would really feel like maybe this team is just still struggling with good competition but uh, that second half in Morgantown was pretty reassuring, showed that, you know, not only could they make some adjustments, but that they could perform really well on the road against a quality opponent. So that made me – that's kind of balancing me out right now. The Georgia game was really good, obviously. Don't get me wrong in that regard either. But uh, it, and it's worth putting some stock into because of how bad the first Georgia game was. But, you know, this team still has to carry that performance on to the, the, the big dogs. And I, th I don't think – I think they wouldn't have had a chance to do that if they didn't have a really good showing against Georgia. But uh, I think that that win kind of is going to give Auburn a chance to parlay that into maybe some competitive games here in the next week and a half or so. But uh, I'm confident in them. You know, they're looking really good. Not only is it a good team effort, but really good performances lately from Alan Flanagan, Wendell Green, and uh, Janai Brome. And that's really good to see too, especially before you – hit this road test, you know, Wendell Green having some momentum behind him is going to be really big with these next two road games. Uh, getting some actual production from the other guards is going to be really big on these next few road games. Maybe Auburn can finally get some proper spacing in there, give Wendell Green a little more room to work when he is running the show as well. And But, you know, they got some positives going, but the big question is still, can they do it against the top teams? Yep, we're about to find out. We're about to find out. I mean, I think the best team Auburn's played is, I mean, Arkansas. I yeah. mean, you look at Arkansas's kind of coming on a little bit, beat Texas A&M. I don't know, you know, are certainly certainly the most talented. Arkansas's plenty talented. So it's, it's probably the best team Auburn's played. Um, they played some other good teams. I mean, you know, Florida, look at Florida um, upsetting Tennessee. So Florida's sitting there yep. six and three. And so that that win is is looking a little bit better. Um, I think at this point in the season, we know what this Auburn basketball team is. Mm -hmm. And and for people that watch, um, you, you gotta just kind of I, I told people even before the season started or as the season was getting going, when they were at when they would ask me about the team, and well, if we could just get this guy going, or if we could just and I'm like, I hear you, but this team kind of is what they they, they are what they are. Um, you're not going to get, unfortunately, you're not going to get consistency from from the guy, from most of the, from a lot of the guys. Janai's pretty consistent. Wendell's kind of, Wendell's more consistent than not, but he's kind of up and down because teams will, will really try to find ways to disrupt him. KD, inconsistent. Al, inconsistent. Uh, Jalen's pretty consistent when he gets the touches. Um, but this team kind of, you know, we sort of know what they're about, and that is limit the turnovers, good things will happen. That's number one. Five turnovers against Georgia, a season low 
I think the previous season low was seven against Winthrop earlier in the year. So uh, five turnovers, you limit, li try to do your best to limit points in transition, get back and defend. And this Auburn team's pretty good. When they turn it over and, and they give the other team um, easy looks, they, they, that's, that's not a recipe for success for a team in Auburn that sometimes can struggle on the offensive end, um, <clears throat> which is even more reason to not turn the ball over because they need those possessions. Um, and so that's kind of where it starts with this group is just securing the basketball. When they do it, they're going to they're going to be in the game. They can play with Tennessee. They can play with Alabama if they limit the turnovers. When they don't, really, really bad things happen. Um, Katie Johnson, a couple of good games. You got to love what you've seen there. Janai Broom had 19 and 18 against Georgia. A sick performance from Janai Broom. Uh, Wendell had 18. Al had 22. He's torched Georgia now twice. Um but I, what I liked about the Georgia game and, and really the second half of the West Virginia game, as opposed to the first half, the A&M game, going back to that one real quick, A&M's got Auburn's number right now. Buzz Williams has got Auburn's number. And so, you know, and, and that's a good team, by the way. There's, there's some pretty good players. I mean, um, but that's one where Auburn's just going to have to get over the hump against Texas A&M. Um, and so that, that's kind of how I, I look at that game. Did Auburn play well? No. But A&M just offensively and defensively schemed really well and, and had Auburn's number in that one. West Virginia is a different story. Auburn's a better team than West Virginia, uh, in, in, in my estimation. The first half of that game was just a complete lack of focus that you, that you hate to see from this Auburn team. And when they do, it gets sideways real quick. And you get down, whatever, 15, 16 points. At, at halftime, there's just no reason for it. You come back in the second half and you storm all the way back and, and had chances to win the game at the end. If not for, a, uh, you know, that corner three from Stevenson, Auburn maybe wins the game. Jalen Williams had an and one that goes in and out. Like a couple of little things and Auburn comes all the way back and wins that game. Um, but what you saw second half and against Georgia is when this team focuses and isn't lazy, they're really good. But they have this tendency to get lazy with their thinking and whether it's running sets, whether it's with the basketball, whether it's being focused on defense, they just have these lulls um, that they go through um, and it's cost them. It cost them against A&M, it cost them against West Virginia, it cost them against Georgia the first time. And it's not so much like they just got out play bad, but they go through stretches where you're just like, you know, they just, it just looks like they completely lose focus and then they can come back like the second half against West Virginia, like against Georgia, and they look like a focus team. They're passing the ball. They're, they have a purpose with what they're doing offensively. They're locked in on defense. When they do that, they're really good. That's the challenge with this team is, 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 is just finding some consistency, being locked in and focused and not being lazy on both ends of the floor because they don't have, and we've talked about it before, they don't have those guys to make up the slack. We don't have Jabari and Walker. You know, Walker's sitting there. If you you know if you have defensive letdowns, you have Walker sitting back there to block shots. Or if you have an offensive set that's not going anywhere, you can toss it to Jabari in the elbow. Um, so you don't have that. So I liked what I saw against Georgia. Much more focused, purposeful team, and just blitz them. Um, which I wasn't sure how that game was going to go. Kind of a late arriving crowd because of traffic on campus. A little low energy to start. Um, and, and, and then Auburn, you know, really played really well in the first half. I was kind of worried there that, that uh, there might be a little hangover, but not at home. Auburn seems to avoid, for the most part, those hangovers at home. Even if they lose, they come back, and that arena just gives them energy. Um, what do you make of, uh, of how, they're using, uh, how they're using the guards? We talked about kind of the guards a little bit after the last few games on whether it's Wendell, Trey. Katie's getting in the mix a little bit more the last couple of games. Um, seems to be playing pretty well. Um, one thing I noticed against Georgia is Wendell went out of that game five minutes in, and then Trey got some nice run, and Wendell didn't come back in until the 10-minute mark. So he played his first stint and then sat for five good minutes of game time and didn't come back until 10 minutes in. Ended up playing 26 minutes, which is a great number for Wendell where you're not pushing him 32. Because he just – think about what he does – with the ball, if he gets 30 plus minutes, he is, he is tired. He is dead. So if you could keep him to 26, 28 minutes, that's, that's a huge development. I thought um, last night and it showed two turnovers, six, 11 from the field. 
Much better field goal percentage from him. Six assists. I thought he played well. Yeah, I think that Trey Donaldson playing well is the key there, obviously, too. Um, I can't don't have the stats right in front of me right now. I put him in the primer, though. But I think Trey, he either had one or two made field goals in SEC play, you know, not counting the West Virginia game coming into this game. And the first three games as well, you know, he played about 15 minutes a game. I don't think he actually hit 15, but I think it was like 14, 13, yeah. 11. And uh, he just, you know, he he wasn't producing at that point, which is, you know, not common. That's common for a freshman. They hit a wall, they get, you know, some tape gets out there on them. Teams start scheming for him a little bit. You attack the freshman a little extra on defense and you can force a couple of mistakes here and there. And I think that that kind of, prompted Auburn to go a little heavier on Wendell Green and also slowed down those Trey Donaldson backup minute and, you know, those other rotation developments. And it also made those rotations that did have Trey in them less efficient, less effective. And that in turn, you know, started a lot of those lulls, I think. And you you take Wendell out of the game, you put Trey in there. KD's not playing well at that point. Trey wasn't playing well. And, you know, you've got a lot less to work with in those lineups when neither of those guys are playing well. But you, if you have KD and Trey both being viable options to facilitate and score the basketball, you can run those windowless lineups and not worry about your offense falling off for four or five minutes. So how many times have we seen those lineups come in and it's, oh, Auburn's now gone, you know, four minutes and five seconds without a made field goal. And yeah. That just wasn't the case last time. Trey came in there. He was moving the ball in transition, getting into the lane, making some good passes, and it's a big difference. I think he led the team in assists in the first half. He might have had like five. So, yeah, you know, Trey, I really Trey like had, that. I'm hoping he had, he had five assists in 14 minutes against Georgia. Five assists in 14 minutes. Wendell yeah. had six assists. And I think five of Wendell's came in the second half as well, maybe four of them. But either way, they kind of like – it was yeah, just – it was, you know, it showed how good that rotation can be when one of them comes in, the other one – or comes out, the other comes in and steps up. Yeah, I thought Trey looked confident uh, against Georgia. Pushed the ball when he got it. He was really trying to push the ball up court. Obviously knocked down that three. Um, but he had some nice passes too. He's a good player. Um, I think he's just a freshman. Mm-hmm. He, he comes into some of those SEC games maybe and – you know, doesn't want to, you know, I still think there's a little bit of when you're a freshman, you, you, you don't know how, um, you don't know how aggressive to be, you know, you, when you've got other guys on the team that are experienced, you, you, do, do I try to take things over? How, how do you sort of find that balance of being okay with making mistakes as a, as a freshman and trying to go in there and just not mess anything up? And so I think that's normal for any freshman. Um, but yeah, I played really well, five assists in 14 minutes. Um KD, a couple of good games in a row. We talked about him, 13 points in 26 minutes, four or seven from the field. He's one of those guys that I wrote about a couple of weeks ago when he was sort of just, you know, he was maybe shooting the ball three, four times a game. Um, and I said, at some point, we got to watch KD because at some point with this team and, this, and, with, and, and as this schedule gets tougher, he, he's going to he, he's gonna be a guy that could pop up and, and, and sort of potentially get back into that role he was last year of we need him to facilitate. Um, I think from Georgia State, that game that he sat out, really after that game, um, he he sort of took took a step back to me. He sort of tried to just fit into the role, come off the bench, um, and you didn't see a lot of the KD kind of confidence and swagger. He would come in, do his job. He passed the ball. He didn't look to take things over on offense. Um, Last couple of games, at West Virginia's second half, I think he had nine points in the second half, um, and then against Georgia, kind of reverting back to being aggressive on offense. Of course, we know with KD, it's 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 kind of bipolar. I mean, we we don't know. He's either going to spark that team like he did in Morgantown um, for good things, or or he's going to lose his composure and he's going to commit a couple turnovers and take a couple bad shots. And you're going to be going, what in the world? Um, I mean, you, you don't ever quite know what you're going to get with him. Um, but I do think as the season goes on and you play these tougher teams, I think KD's going to have to sort of step back up a little bit like he has the past 
game and a half. He took seven shots uh, against Georgia, played 26 minutes, um, four or five from the free throw line, 13 points. And so I think he's a guy that's going to maybe have to, if Auburn's struggling scoring, you know, if they're trying to, you know, if they're struggling getting some things going, uh, I think he's a guy that's maybe going to have to step back up a little bit when he's in there and not try to take things over, but find ways to be aggressive when he, when he can. Um, and I, so I like what he's done the last couple of games. Um, we'll see if that can, we'll see if that can continue. Cause Janai, look, Janai is going to go up against some big guys this week against Tennessee. They've got plenty of length. Alabama's got plenty of length. Um, and so it can't just be all on Wendell at the guard position. Um, it, it can't be all on him. KD, when he comes in, has got to attack and get to the free throw line, really. That's where he's that's where he's at his best. It's when he's attacking and getting to the free throw line, draw some fouls. There's nobody, there's nobody better than him on the team. There's few better than him in the league, honestly, at just at just wreaking havoc and getting to the foul line. Um, and so he's gonna be an interesting one to to keep watching, KD. And can he continue this? I mean, Auburn scores 90 points. Obviously, it's some big scores, but KD coming off the bench and scoring 13, that's a that's a that's a huge deal. I think he's kind of an X factor as the schedule goes on these next three games and the, as the season, you know, plays out, I think KD right now is that X factor of what are you going to get when he's on and he's and his energy's high and he's making good decisions. Auburn is a lot better team when he's not they're, they're a lot worse. And so it's like, you don't ever know what you're going to get. Yeah, I agree. I think KD Johnson's a big potential fix for those lulls as well. And um, we talk about how, you know, there's kind of two sides of KD. You have that out of control, chaotic uh, KD Johnson that sometimes works. You know, that's how Auburn forced all those overtimes in the UConn game last year. And there were a couple other instances like that as well. But there's times when that just causes turnovers and takes away good opportunities from other players and stuff too. So I think he has to find a balance there. And I think getting him into a true backup spark plug role could really help that. Uh, You put him in the game when he is the number one scoring option and, you know, things work for him a little better. He's not taken away as much from others and it allows him to play that almost reckless game without, you know, taking everybody else out of sync. And I think those lineups that have Chris Moore and Dylan Cardwell and, you know, some of those bigger lineups that, um, don't have as much offensive ability, but are great defensively. You get stops with those, and then you can come down and hopefully KD can either draw some fouls or get a couple of those super intense and difficult buckets. And yeah, it makes those lineups a little easier. And you know, I think that that's a big deal there. But just KD Johnson in general too, when he's playing out there with Wendell Green or uh, Trey Donaldson, you know, one of the plays I pulled from the West Virginia game was. Um, Everybody knows that Wendell Green's going to get double teamed and defenders are going to stick on him like glue when he's playing well. You know, and this was when Trey Donaldson was in, but still, KD Johnson started playing well. And both of West Virginia's uh, point guard and shooting guard started to sort of levitate towards KD more and more on defense. And that's what started leaving Trey Donaldson open. And that's what gave him space. And it just works for everybody that way. And I think it's a big deal. You know, you got Zeb Jasper and KD Johnson playing poorly. Defense is just completely key in on Auburn's point guards. And if your point guards, your first or second best scorer and player on the floor, then that's a pretty big problem. Yeah. Looking back at that Georgia game, some interesting stats. Uh, Jalen Williams only scored four points in that game. If I told you Auburn's going to score 94 in an SEC game and Jalen's only going to contribute four, probably be pretty shocked, but in typical Jalen fashion, five boards, four assists. Um, just he's just kind of the ultimate he's just kind of the ultimate contributor i thought zep played really good defense was really chasing did a good job of chasing uh cario quindo and and terry roberts around those two guys combined for 17 points by the way uh as opposed to 43 in athens they committed five turnovers auburn just was not going to let those guys get going they actually were attacking on ball screens the way auburn the way auburn the way opponents attack wendell green you know, they were mm-hmm. they were coming off and Dylan and then were trapping Terry Roberts and making him give up the basketball. And 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 if other guys score, so be it. But they were just not gonna let Roberts and Aquindo come off ball screens, find find momentum, uh, attack the basket, things like that. It just wasn't gonna happen. So I thought Auburn's defensive game plan was 
really good. It got a little lax in the second half, but the game the game kind of got really really high paced back and forth in the second half. Georgia just said we're we're, we're going, we're going, we're we're, we're going to press. Uh, we're going to get the ball after made baskets and just go and get looks. And they did a good job. But what's crazy is, I mean, Georgia had 10 threes in the second half of that game last night. Um, 10 threes in one half. And um, and the halftime deficit grew. Auburn, Auburn still outscored them. Auburn scored 52 points in the second half. Uh, I can't imagine hitting 10 threes in a half of basketball and losing that half of basketball. <laughs> I mean – but uh, that's what happens. Auburn shot 68% in the second half, 21 buckets and 31 shots, um, which, which can happen. When you're Georgia and you're putting so much energy on offense to get it up the court and press, your defense is probably going to lack a little bit. You're just, your energy and your, 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 it's just not quite going to be there when you're expending energy pressing, pushing the ball up the court, um, and trying to play fast. Sometimes that defense struggles, and that's what happened last night. Um, so what do you make of uh, where this team is going to the next three games? I mean, that was a big game, that Georgia game. I mean, I know, you know, Georgia's is uh, – number one, Georgia's Auburn's quote-unquote worst loss, okay? Georgia was about 112 in the net, something like that. Um, that's Auburn's only loss outside of about the top 50, 55 in the net rankings. The other other teams they've lost to are, are all good teams, bubble bubble-type tournament teams. Um, so it was good that, that one, that Auburn avenged their only bad loss. So if you're looking at Auburn's resume and you're going, do they have any bad losses? Georgia, you, yeah, it's not even a bad loss on the road in Georgia, but it's not a, it's not like a good loss necessarily either, if that makes sense, but they avenged it. So to me, that kind of negates that on your resume. Um, but it was also big just cause you know, it's coming up. If Auburn loses that game, they are, <clears throat> they are staring at, a very real potential of, of six lo- six game losing streak because of what you've got the next three games. I mean, Auburn could lose at A&M and lose at Tennessee and lose at Alabama. And, and I don't even think, depending on how the games go, but I, I mean, <clears throat> there's a lot of teams in this country that would lose those three games. I'd say most. There's very few teams mm-hmm. that are going to go to Tennessee, go to A&M and host Alabama and, and win one, let alone two of those. Um, a lot of teams would go 0 and 3. I think Auburn needs to get one for their resume. These next three games, you know, whether it's Alabama at home, Tennessee at home, Kentucky on the road, Auburn needs one or two resume building wins just to make sure they're good come tournament time. Because they're gonna have a they're gonna have a resume that's that's just kind of it's gonna be high strength of schedule, a lot of good opponents, a couple of okay wins. But if they don't get a couple of these elite wins, you're going to kind of wonder about how proven they are. Where do we see this team? Are they for real? That's the way the NCAA tournament is going to look at it. And so getting a couple of these wins as we go are going to be monster just for that resume. Um, I don't know, you know, I don't know what I want to see in the next three games. Obviously, you want to see Auburn win the game. But is there anything in particular that you want to see over the next three games against elite competition, Tennessee and Alabama, and, of course, an A&M team that took you to the woodshed, really, in Neville. Um, what do you want to see over the next three games that would that would give you confidence come NCAA tournament time? Is there something that Auburn hasn't done, or is it just, hey, I just want to see them against elite competition? I just want to see them against Tennessee and Alabama and see what they look like. Um, but, you know, what, what, I guess what do you kind of want to see so that you can go, okay, all right, I've seen how they do this, a matchup against an elite team or whatever it might be that either gives me confidence or it doesn't. Now I see something that really troubles me. What are you, what are you, what are you looking for the next, next week and a half? Yeah, I think a big thing will just be to see how they, you know, these are litmus tests in a way. This will be the first time we've seen Auburn play anybody like this. And we'll get a good chance to see just how good Auburn is. I feel like, you know, there's a lot of good we've seen so far. There's a lot of bad we've seen so far. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, this Tennessee game in particular, just what Auburn can do. Um, Are they going to come out and look how they did against Georgia the first time? Or are they going to come out and play like that second half against West Virginia and, you know, go shot for shot with Tennessee or whatever it takes? Tennessee just lost to Florida. Florida pretty much dominated them. um, Started the game up like 20 to 6 or something like that and just kept going. So, um 
you know, Tennessee's beatable, but they're a really good team. They're a really physical team. They're a really good defense. They're big and they're talented too. And that's, you know, those are all things that have hurt Auburn, slowed Auburn down at times. And I think that just seeing how Auburn does against that will answer a lot of questions or at least, you know, pose a lot of new questions and give us a different outlook on this team or at least a more solidified outlook on this team. Um, I don't think that these three games are going to be deciding factors in the NCAA tournament or anything. Right. I'm yeah. almost, you know, I think Auburn is good to go almost unless something catastrophic happens over the this last portion of the season. But uh, it, it could definitely be a seeding thing. You know, the difference between an eight seed and a five seed or something even could be how Auburn does. They're going to get another chance at Tennessee, Alabama, and then Kentucky at the end of the season too. But you get these and you're in, you know, you get, you win one of these, then you feel pretty good about yourself. You win two of them and, you know, you might start to change your outlook on the season a little bit. You might get a little more desire for what this team can do or something. But in terms of specific things I'm looking to see, I definitely like to see Janai Brome have some good games, specifically against Tennessee, getting in there against some big physical big men. He's had some trouble with that before, coming off his best game of his Auburn career now. So, that's going to be a big thing to watch for me. Obviously, Wendell Green always is, you know, a deciding factor. If he plays well against Tennessee, Alabama, and Texas A&M, you know, that's that that bodes really well, not just for the rest of the season, because you know he's going to have his off games. It's that's how this team is. We talked about it; they're inconsistent. But if Wendell Wendell can show up for arguably the three biggest game stretch of the season, then you you start to feel really good about what he can do in a tournament setting as well. I think. Or at least you start to feel a little more confident depending on where you sit on the Wendell issue right now. Cause I know some fans love him, you know, some fans want a lot more from him. And I think this could be sort of a chance for him to do something really positive here. And, you know, at the very least, it's going to be something to watch because super t- difficult three game stretch. That's what you're going to see in March in the SEC tournament, the NCAA tournament. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, Wendell and Janai are going to be big to watch just the team in general too yeah you you said something that i agree with which is these next three games are not gonna keep auburn out of the ncaa tournament if anything it, it, auburn's i mean these next three games if anything auburn could lose all three and their net and mm-hmm. their ken palm rating probably won't go anywhere because because yeah. of the strength of those three teams i mean you know you can't go zero and three but it, it, it it won't change much. I don't know what they are at this moment as recording this, but um, I mean, Tennessee was what Ken Palm number one before that loss yep. to Florida. E- either way, I mean, it's it's um, it's not going to keep you out, um, but they are the kind of wins that will help with seeding or lock up um, your 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 seeding in the tournament. What it does is, look, if you're Auburn, you still got Missouri, good team. You got Vanderbilt in Nashville. Always a tricky place. Um, you got Ole Miss again. Um, but you drop one of those games, and these games matter. You know, basically Auburn's oh, yeah. in a position right now where they, they cannot drop Vanderbilt, they cannot drop Ole Miss, and they cannot drop Missouri. they got to win those three games. And then it's like what Bruce Pearl said uh, after the Georgia game. He's like, we, look, we gotta, we got to win the games we need to win, and then we got to pick, pick one or two off. That's exactly right. They need to beat Missouri. They need to beat Ole Miss. They need to beat um, who am I listening? Who am I missing? Vanderbilt. They need to win those three for sure. Um, and then they need to try to pick one or two off. Alabama and Tennessee, obviously at home, are going to be great opportunities. Kentucky on the road. I think Auburn can be in that game. I mean, Kentucky's playing good basketball now, but they're not a juggernaut, and they are prone to. Um, you know, they're prone to making mistakes and things like that. So I think that's a game Auburn can be in and rough. Um, the other two at, at Tennessee and, and well, at Tennessee, at A&M and Alabama are, are going to be really tough. Really, re- really tough. The, if Auburn somehow won one of those games, monster win. I mean, that's road quad one win. It's as tough as it comes. If they somehow picked off one of those three, um, that's the kind of win that carries – a ton of weight. That's the kind of win that you can look at a resume at the end of the year and go, yeah, but they did that one thing. That that one win could carry 
um, a ton of weight if they could go into Tennessee, A and M, or Alabama and win. Um, I think the game uh, on Saturday is going to be a, a a dog fight. I mean, Tennessee plays phenomenal defense. I didn't watch the Florida game, so Florida clearly had a great game plan. But I, Tennessee's basically been the best def- defensive team in the country this year. They're going to be all over Wendell Green um, and pressuring those guards. They're, they're, Auburn's going to be starting offense from damn near half court. Um, it, it's going to be a really interesting game. They've got the bigs and the athletic ability, I think, to to combat Janai Broom uh, and to make his his life I'd say difficult, but he's not going for 19 and 18. Okay. Um, and so it's going to be guys like Jalen Williams, Alan Flanagan's got the athletic ability. Um, but the game against Tennessee is going to be a, is going to be a, a war. Um, and then of course you go to college station and that's going to be, you know, you can talk about revenge, all that, but A&M straight up, straight up schematically knows what Auburn's doing right now. So it's not just going in there and fixing a few things. You, Auburn's going to have to, do some different things schematically against A&M to win that game. Um, it's not just going to be about turn, turn the ball over less or, I mean, A&M knows what they're running and when they're running it uh, and how to combat it. So that, that, that right now is just a really tough matchup. These next two games are just brutal. They're just brutal. And so I think for Auburn, do you want to get one? Yes, of course. But, man, just play some good basketball on the road um, against teams that could – Either one of those teams can make runs in the NCAA tournament. So go play good basketball, show some good things, show some growth. Win one, of course, you'd love to win one. Um, but I think you want to see this, t- this team continue to grow and look like they're, in- they're improving. I actually think that the game on Saturday is going to be really close. I think the game in Knoxville is going to be really close. I do. Um, I think that – I mean, you look back last year, Auburn didn't play well at all, and, and that game was still down to the wire. Um, I think Tennessee's style and that defensive style, I think Auburn can kind of muck it up with them. And, 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 and Auburn can play pretty good defense too. And I could see this game being, you know, 67-62, 65-60. I could see it being something like that. If, it, if either team gets to 70, they're winning. I'll put it to you that way on, against Tennessee. Um, but I, I think it's going to be a close game. I do. I think Auburn's going to go in there and fight their butt off. and. Uh, and it's going to be a good game. And then A&M, you just, again, that team absolutely has Auburn's number, and I don't know what to expect there. Um, you could get a different A&M team. I mean, you've lost to them in Auburn in a neutral court. Maybe A&M's a little different at home. Maybe maybe they're, maybe they, maybe they A&M has a great track record of kind of going into an environment that's not theirs and they're locking in against an Auburn team the last two times. It's been favored and been comfortable. Maybe Auburn goes in there with a different mentality, a road dog mentality to try to match that toughness that A&M brings, and, and maybe that helps them uh, in that matchup. But, man, two brutal games ahead. You'd love to, love to pick one off. Um, but, man, the important thing is to try to play good basketball because then you got Alabama coming in. So what you can't have happen is play bad basketball, lose both those games on the road, lose some confidence, and then try to come back at home and face an Alabama team that if they heat up, good luck. Um, they're going to, at the very least, they're going to need some confidence and feel like we played decent basketball and go into that Bama game saying, all right, we're about to put a W on the board. Um, you, you can't come into that game down in the dumps after losing two straight and make it three straight. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, you got to. Yeah, just getting some momentum out of this one would be big and, you know, definitely something to hang your hat on kind of thing with these next three games. And you don't want to do the opposite and have to look back at those. And, you know, there's just – this is an important stretch, but it'll be fun to see, especially this 10 yeah. game, I think, you know, like man, super physical, but uh, yeah. definitely a winnable game for Auburn too, not just in the sense of matchups, but also in the sense of, the Bruce Pearl history with Tennessee and how intense and, you know, Auburn's upset them pretty significantly under Bruce Pearl a couple of times. Now you had the Sharif Cooper season, and then you had the uh, first SEC championship season. And 
there's been a few others in there too. And it, it, you know, it was, I don't remember what the streak was at at one point, but Auburn had won however many over Tennessee in a row. And Bruce Pearl's teams, Bruce Pearl and his team seem to get up for this one. Yeah. No matter where um, it is too. Yeah. I think it's going to be a dog fight. I think it's going to be a fun one. Um, real quick, Auburn moved up six spots in the net, but that's kind of a joke, but unfortunately the NCAA tournament selection committee uses it. So we got to cite it. So they moved up to 30 in the net. But you look at Auburn's schedule real quick, and we'll go. But it's just really interesting when you're talking about the strength of Auburn's schedule. So you look at the net, and, of course, Tennessee's sitting there at two. Bama's at four. Um, <clears throat> and then you've got uh, you've got West Virginia at 24. So, like, that, that loss is on the road. That loss isn't going to hurt Auburn. It was a missed opportunity to get a win, but it, 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 it'll do nothing to hurt Auburn's chances on the resume. Um, it was just a missed opportunity. But you look at Arkansas's at 28. Auburn has that win. But then you look here. Kentucky's at 35. Memphis, I'm sorry, Florida's at 41. Memphis is at 42. Missouri's at 46. Texas A&M's at 48. Northwestern's at 49. Mississippi State's at 51. Uh, USC is at 55. So th that group of teams right there, of course, Auburn has a win over Mississippi State Northwestern, a loss to A&M, a loss to Memphis, a win over Florida. That group of teams is going to be interesting to watch as Auburn tries to build that resume. Because anything, mm -hmm. I have to go back and look. Any, if, it's an on, if it's a road game in, in, inside the top 50, it's a quad one win. If it's a home game inside the top 30, it's a quad one. So the couple of those could could leak into quad one territory depending on how they do. But that little group of games is is good for Auburn. Southern Cal's a loss, but they're at 55. If they keep winning, if you can come back and avenge a loss against AM, you've got a win over Northwestern, beat Missouri, they're sitting there at 46. You already beat Florida. Memphis is sitting at 42. That's what I'm talking about. About some of their losses are are not bad losses at all. And and are actually those teams are kind of doing their part right now and having decent seasons. And Southern Cal's 15 and six. Um, and so <clears throat> that's the other equation. We're talking about Auburn needing those elite wins. The other part of the equation is that kind of group of teams continuing to win so that you look back on Auburn's schedule and go, guys, they, they got, you know, okay, they've lost nine games. But there's none of them are bad losses. You know, every single team they've lost to potentially could be in the tournament. Um Potentially, Missouri, some of these Florida, those teams don't that they've got work to do, but um, they're bubble, they're bubble type teams. So, anyway, just a quick note on the net rankings and kind of that group of teams right there that are sitting there um, in decent standing to where really you're looking at Auburn's schedule going. They haven't lost to anybody bad, no bad losses, and really, like we said, as long as you beat Ole Miss, um, Vandy, and Missouri, you're not going to have one because the rest of the schedule is brutal. Every other team. I mean, if you lose to A&M and Tennessee and Alabama and Kentucky, so be it. A lot of teams are. All right, let's uh, let's get out of here. Big week for Auburn. Um, they're sitting at tied for second in the league with Tennessee and A&M at seven and two. That's their next two opponents. Their third opponents, number one in the conference, Alabama. So monster stretch here. Um, and then sitting right behind there, you got Kentucky and Florida at six and three. Um, and of course, you got a win over Florida. And then you got Kentucky coming up too. They're they're creeping there. So you see how close this is. Alabama's kind of pulled away right now with that two game lead. But man, right behind them, Auburn could go from second to to sixth in a heartbeat. Um, these mm -hmm. teams could flip flop between Tennessee, A and M, Florida, Kentucky, and and Auburn. Um, I mean, two losses. If Auburn loses these two games, they could jump from second to sixth real quickly. Um, that's just kind of that that top four or five teams in the SEC. Past Alabama, those that group of I guess four, five is really close. So, all right, let's get out of here. Remember to go to sub subscribe to AuburnLive.com. Twenty nine ninety nine until the next football season. Uh, go subscribe to the Auburn Live YouTube page. Hit notifications. Make sure you're on there. For Jay, I'm Justin. We'll talk to you next time. See ya.